We're going to create our fork texture using a basic background first. So we're going to load up with paint. You see I'm very generous. This is not a skimpy art. If you want to do this, you have to be generous with your paint in particular. So that was a copper color that I used. And now I'm going to use brown. I used I used a chipboard on the other one. So let's do this one with the putty. putty. Same principle. We're just going to smooth this over. If you really want a smooth, smooth, smooth surface, you're not going to use your putty knife because whatever leftover paint or fraying in your plastic there is, it's not going to give you that completely smooth surface. If you want that completely smooth surface, of course, you just go to your chipboard. Even with the sponge, even if you were to use a sponge, you're not going to get the completely smooth, but you're going to get it spread. And you really don't want to keep going over this. If you want to, you could go back and add some more color. Let's say, let's give some pistachio green, just for the sake of some color to this. All right. Now, let's get my excess off. I don't like to waste the paint, so I like to just get this on my surface. Sometimes you don't want to put it on your paint, but if you can put it somewhere to use later, then that's great. If not, don't sacrifice your design for the sake of not using your paint. Okay, now that we have this down, I'm going to put my sponge in some water so it does, so I can use this a few more times. But I'm going to take my fork. It's just a plastic fork, nothing special. I like the heavyweight ones though, they give me a stronger fork texture. So now I'm just going to scratch, keeping my pressure on and drawing horizontal lines. My lines are parallel to each other. When I said horizontal, I really meant parallel lines. I'm doing a diagonal line, but keeping it close to each other. I'm not starting and stopping. I'm not doing it zigzaggy. Offload excess paint and keep going. Okay, so now we can come from the opposite direction. Don't wait for your paint to get too tacky, or this would be difficult to do. So this is our fork texture, just using our straight lines. So we're going to do it again. We're going to create another fork texture. This time we'll have an added flair to it. So we're going to load up again.
add as many colors as you like, just don't get it too muddy. And we're going to pull this together. The key to doing this successfully is to keep it relatively flat at an angle. Keep your chipboard relatively flat. You'll be able to do this very quickly after you practice it for a while. With this texture, we're going to use a fork again and we are going to do it more wavy. We're not going like this. We're not going to go jaggedy. We want smooth, soft lines. And you kind of run them parallel to each other. Always have your hand towel handy because we need to be offloading the paint. If you don't offload your paint, what will happen is your strokes become fatter, inconsistent, and you don't want that. You'll see some areas are, the, pen, the paint is not as heavy as on other areas. That just gives you a variety of textures. Let's now take this across in the opposite direction. Let's use the bottom of our, our fork now to show, just to see how you can use this to create other textures. We're just using a reverse technique by removing the paint. This can be done in one direction. Or you can do it, if you want something strong and bold, come back and do it again. Okay. So this is our wavy form of our fork texture.